Welcome back. I'm Doc Palmer. I'm the author of McGraw-Hill's best-selling reliability book, the Maintenance Planning and Scheduling Handbook. We've been talking about planning and scheduling, obviously. Uh, the, the purpose of planning is to help us do better work over the years, and we have to accept that plans are not perfect. The purpose of scheduling is to help us complete more work than we would normally complete, not necessarily have high schedule compliance. Those two weird concepts that plans are not perfect and that you have to fully load schedules to defeat Parkinson's law to complete more work, but you'll have lower schedule compliance, are really weird. Most people miss that, and they implement planning and scheduling and really frustrate everybody. We've been through the... Uh, five principles so far are the six principles of planning. We're going to deal with the sixth principle now. The first principle of planning, this is chapter two of the handbook, uh, you have to protect planners. Principle two, you want them to give head starts that are not perfect because we're putting everything through the dimming cycle. It's not that we're planning for the plans to be not perfect, it's just we have to accept they're not perfect. They're head starts for skilled craftspersons. They give us feedback, and the third principle is we keep that feedback at the component or asset level, this valve, that valve, this pump, that, that device. Then we improve the plan, and that completes the dimming cycle. Uh, unfortunately, uh, running a dimming cycle um, doesn't allow us to get everything through the dimming cycle. Two things bog us down. The fourth principle of planning is the estimates themselves. A simple judgment or guess on the part of a planner it is probably good enough to get enough accuracy to help us generally assign work. The purpose of planning is not to have perfect time estimates, even though we would like them. The fifth principle of plan, planning that we talked about last time is the level of detail in a job plan. It, we want great job plans for a new person as a reference for a senior person. You just can't start there. There's just not enough time. So the level of detail criteria is as detailed as possible, subject to the constraint, you have to get everything through the dimming cycle. You have to plan everything. So you don't have time to make perfect plans. Get over that. You can't anyways. We want to plan everything. So this last principle of planning is about wrench time, which we started with. Going from 35% wrench time where everybody is, because that's the point of humans feeling busy, to 55% which is the best practice, 55% range time, that's best practice. That doesn't seem like very high. Basically, you're saying if we work half days, we'll get ahead. But going from 35% range time to 55 is actually a 57% pop. So if you had 30 persons, you would suddenly have 47 persons worth of work being done. So that's extra 17 people. But you don't have to measure wrench time. Everybody's at 35%. You're just going to make everybody nervous and start a lot of rumors. If you do measure wrench time, you have to do it with a statistical study where you look for certain people at certain times. And then over a long enough period, so you'll have a low enough margin of error. To know you're not at 55% wrench time, you'll find you're at 35% wrench time. You can't just follow people around. People won't act normal, and there's not a typical person you can follow around. You also cannot have people report their own wrench time. Self-reported wrench time is commonly in the 70s because people don't really understand if they're going to get a part, going to get a tool, just standing there for a minute between jobs. They're, they're not at work. They are at work, but it's not wrench time. Um, anyways, uh, this principle also embodies that planning does not improve wrench time because of Parkinson's law. Parkinson's law is the amount of work assigned expands to fill the amount of time available. At the plant I worked at, we'd had a consultant come in and do a wrench time study, and we found we were at 37% wrench time. But we had terrible delays for parts and tools. Well, we fixed our warehouse and we got everybody better hand tools, and this consultant came back and did another wrench time study. They found that our tools delays and parts delays had gotten a lot better. better. 
but we were still at 37% range time. But our delays for travel went way up. So then we bought everybody go-karts and bicycles. We also got supervisors out of their office by cutting back on their admin work and meetings. And we also got to where we were planning most of the work with these great job plans where we had taken advantage of what we'd learned over the years, better description of what the operator really wanted, um, and better parts and stuff available. We were still at 37% range time. Actually, we went down to 35% range time. So just because you have great job plans and great supporting stuff, if you don't give people enough work, we'll still have 35% range time. We're not assigning enough work. Um, and also, wrench time by itself is a terrible measure. You could have a carpenter show up at the wrong house and hammer screws instead of nails. They're doing the wrong job inefficiently and incorrectly. They hammer slowly. They never take a break. And you have 100% wrench time. So, so be careful with wrench time. Wrench time just explains why we get a pop in productivity. But in the future, in these discussions together, we'll talk about scheduling. Scheduling is necessary to defeat wrench times. It's not enough to have great job plans if you don't give people enough work. If you don't give people enough work and you notice they come in late and they leave early, well, you, we can't have that, so we put in time clocks. But you still don't give them enough work. And you notice they spend a lot of time in the break room. We can't have that, so you put in rules. You can't be in the um, break room except for 10 o'clock to 10.15 and from 2 o'clock to 2.15. But you still don't give people enough work. They'll complete the same amount of work they've always completed, but they'll take their time doing jobs. They'll spend extra time at the tool room. Spend extra time getting parts, even though you don't have a parts issue. And we'll be at 35% wrench time. Because that's at the point of people feeling busy. So in the future, we'll talk about scheduling to defeat Parkinson's law. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for letting me be part of your maintenance family. And God bless, and we'll see you next time.